Next on the docket, a local story making national news. Woman accused of killing her fiance while they were kayaking on the Hudson and new developments in that case. A state police investigator is now testifying that Angelica Graswald admitted to him that she took her fiance's paddle after he capsized in his kayak and held it while he begged her to call 911. The detective also testified that during their 45 minute conversation, Graswald said she felt trapped by Via 4 and wanted to be free of his demands of sex with him and another woman. But in Graswald's 11 hour taped interrogation obtained by ABC News, she repeatedly denies killing her fiance and says her desperate calls to 911 were real. Don't see him. Oh my God. Can you see the kayak still? No, the kayak went on the water. Oh. But after hours and hours of questions punctuated with yoga breaks and hopscotch, Graswald does finally utter these damning words. I wanted him dead and now he's gone. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Graswald spoke to me exclusively from jail. Why would you say something like that? Well, they kept asking me the same questions like a hundred times. I knew that I was innocent. It was at my breaking point. I just, I had it. So I just gave them what they wanted. Did you remove the plug from Vince's kayak with an intent to kill him? No, I did not. Angelica's attorney is Rich Portal, now under a gag order. We spoke with him last year. She did not confess to killing Vincent Villafort. And there are many reasons why he died. My client removing that drain plug was not one of them. Graswald, who has pleaded not guilty, still maintains she did not kill Viafor. Did you kill Vince? No. That day? No, I loved him. I didn't do it. Now, Graswald is saying she didn't understand her Miranda rights when they were read to her. And again, among uh, the allegations um, or that she's facing is she not only pulled the plug of the boat, but she made sure she kept the oar away from him when he was trying to grab something to stay afloat. Um, not exactly uh, a wonderful uh, <laughs> prenuptial uh, relationship there. So, um, Jimmy, first off, when somebody says they didn't get their Miranda rights, uh, we know what that basically means. How do people know if they got it or not? Well, is it just the word of the cops against the person or... It is, and you have a videotape statement 11 hours long, and so obviously you're going to look at the beginning of that videotape statement to see. The problem here uh, is that the statement that the statements that are most damning were were on Bannerman's Island, and my understanding is she went to Bannerman's Island, according to her, to lay a floating wreath, and told the police that she was going there. They then met her there and started questioning her there. And it is there that it is alleged that she made all of these damning statements. And as you can see from the headline, who's Miranda? You know, that's, yeah. that's her way of saying, I don't know what Miranda rights are. You know, Doug, what person won't, when they go into a courtroom, and this applies obviously to the OJs and all the high profile cases, not know the story of the Black Widow on the Hudson. You know, you're going to know some of the general facts, and even if you don't remember them all, as soon as you start hearing them in a court, you're like, oh, wait, that's the one with a with a paddle and the plug, you know? I mean... You mean talking about getting a fair trial? Well, not only getting a fair trial, but isn't, you know, just the me once the media labels you as one of these exotic killer types, right? Well, Aren't you know, you what's really interesting about this case, if you look at it, if this statement is excluded, it looks like there will be no courtroom for this person. I mean, that statement is really the only thing that's holding this, this whole thing together. And that's why when she says my initial statement, which wasn't on tape, it's a big deal. Absolutely. So what you're saying is true if they ever get to court. It doesn't look good for her, though. Don't you think that's going to be admissible? It's not like they beat her with a telephone book mail. It may not be admissible, and we've been asking for uh, police to be required to videotape the entirety of the interrogation, not just clips here and there. And it benefits the police because you get to see everything they do. There are no outtakes. You don't have to worry. She wouldn't be in a position to say, this part of my story wasn't videotaped. You don't start your questioning until you get to the, to the interrogation room. What kind room. of rocket scientist doesn't have an attorney? Well, lots of people don't have an attorney, 
and, and here's the other thing. Lots of people we know give false confessions, and that's borne out by the number of people who are exonerated based upon DNA. And uh, Jeffrey Deskovich, you can take your choice of people who have admitted to things they never did. How about this? You guys have had interesting clients over the years. When people are starting doing yoga exercises and also having some very curious social media um, you know, statements during this all here, not exactly looking like they're overstressed by uh, painful interrogations by the police, it doesn't exactly scream state of mind of grief. Well, that person may have mental health issues, and it also makes you wonder. This is a pretty simple fact pattern. Couldn't Why they also just be guilty? Well, but, well <laughs> you could always be guilty, but the burden, and lots of times we forget the burden, but the burden rests with the prosecutor, and they got to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she's guilty, and a jury's going to probably also want to know why does it take 11 hours to get this That's statement out? That's a big deal. Out. That's a big deal. The 11 hours? Okay, it's a big deal that Mayo, Mayo brings out, and this damning statement is at the end of the yeah. 11 hours. Just picture that. We're here on this show for 50 minutes. Now multiply that by 12, and you're in a room, you can't move, you happen to do yoga. I mean, I, I honestly, when, you, when I hear it's 11 hours, if you did yoga, you need to find a way to, to, to relax. Yeah. To, but also, to, before to get the interrogation, it. after the interrogation, some of the social media comments she made, Doug, I think are as criminating as anything else. This is not someone... You know, Rich, you got to also consider, listen, there's a third option here, that the guy for some, somehow fell in the water and she watched him drown. And she didn't take out a plug. She didn't intend to kill the guy. She could be wacky. And she could actually be happy that he drowned and not killed him. That's a third option that could have, unless she says, I did this with the intent to kill him. Which she did. Well, and well Doug, the other thing, though, that's is that's that you're, you're, in, the you're in the Hudson in a period of time where very few people would venture into the Hudson in a kayak to begin with. So she's equally at risk just being in the Hudson under right. those conditions. Hypothermia, the water was very cold, the weather, water was choppy. Um, you know, you're she good, may man. have been in a position just seems where. She's flat out crazy. But me. she's probably, and, and you'll be hard pressed to find an expert who could say that there was anything she could do to save him if he had simply capsized. But well, you're, you're not allowed to lie to the cops, though. No, but you have to well, ask you yourself. Well, you can lie to the cops if in, in New York State. You don't have to tell the police. If she's the truth. so willing to confess before they get to the precinct, why is she so vehemently denying it when they get there? I mean, you, you do need to think about that. If somebody needs to let it out. Remind me, you three. If I ever get in trouble, to call you. All right. Coming up next, and I am not kayaking either. Coming up next, take a look at some local headlines. Guys, thanks.